But then you wanted to get your, your diploma, so you smiled and kowtowed to somebody else and you compromised yourself to where there's nothing left of you. You're bought and paid for. But yet you want to come and say, do you feel blame? Are you mad? Uh, do you feel like Wolf's Kebab's Rough Venice? Get Freddy's Boots 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 We'll have more of Heidi Schulman's disturbing 1987 interview with Charles Manson when Time and Again continues. With AT&T, there are so many ways to communicate. Because Charles Manson never directly harmed any of his known victims, he claimed that he was wrongfully accused and unfairly tried for murders he ordered. Here he is again with NBC's Heidi Schulman in January 1987 with more denials, a surprising confession, and a chilling threat. Okay. You guys got this stuck in your head that I've murdered somebody. You've got it stuck in your brain that I murdered somebody. You can't get over the first impression that the DA gave you. Oh. Did Nixon write a book? How many people died in Vietnam? The guidelines of a kingdom or the guidelines of a leader or a president, the president doesn't go to war. His soldiers go to war. And when the soldier goes to war and he's completely willing to give his life for his country, that gives him the permission to take life. That's not murder. There's no murder in a war. When a soldier goes off to kill somebody in a war, that's not murder. That's protecting his home. When the Vietnam veterans came back and you called them murderers, they weren't murderers. They were your children fighting for your rights, fighting for that morality that you want to protect so much. What do you want to call me a murderer for? I've never killed anyone. I don't need to kill anyone. I think it. I have it here. I don't need to live in this physical realm. I walk around in the physical realm and I put on the faces and I talk and I play and hang. Yeah, it's just a big act, man. In the spiritual world is where I live. I exist in places you never even dreamed of. You talk about, you know, this little physical realm you live in, guilty and is he in sin? How's your courts guilty? How many people do you think you've hung on the ventilators in the nut wards and forced medication on them? You see what I'm saying? You don't have any idea what the hell's going on. I don't fit in society, and I am incompetent. I'm definitely incompetent. No, that's not what I, I would, said. Oh, I, no, I, I say that. I say that. I, there's nothing wrong with being incompetent, because you don't have to do as much. Uh, <laughs> if you're competent, then you've got a lot to do, see? But there's, 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 a, there's another aspect of it, too. Uh, I've learned to reflect. I just reflect back. I know I don't know. I know I'm stupid. I admit, I'm a petty whatever. I've never been a success at anything. I even got to the point where I didn't want to be a success at anything. What would be a success, what does that mean, you know? Money, oh, I've had all the money in the world three times and I had to give it back. That's a stupid little game, you know? My awareness and my consciousness is not the same as somebody that goes to school and has a mom and dad. See, not having parents have left me in a, another dimension, so to say, you know. I don't have no bad going for nothing. I don't judge. I hardly even think about too much. It's hard for me to remember breakfast. In fact, if I didn't have two or three girls to help me, I would pretty much be lost and I wouldn't know what the hell I'm doing. And my whole life I've burglarized the grocery store, stole some nickels and dimes, busted open a stamp machine, stole a few automobiles, and cashed a couple checks. I'm a petty car thief. I've uh, been with prostitutes and bums and winos and all my life. Uh, the street is my world. I don't, uh, I don't pretend to go uptown and be anything fancy. I can but I find more real in the world that I'm in than I do the tinsel. And the real world is the one I have to deal with every day, you know. Uh, believe me, if I started murdering people, there'd be none of you left. Because my children are coming. I told you 20 years ago. Charles Manson is a convicted killer, an emotionally unbalanced sociopath, 
Unaccountably, he's also enjoyed a certain cult status, which lingers in some quarters to this day. Seven years after Heidi Shulman's interview with Manson, NBC's Sarah James filed this report for today. It was January 11, 1994. With little fanfare, the heavy metal band Guns N' Roses released their new CD called The Spaghetti Incident a few weeks ago. Shortly thereafter, it was revealed that the last song on the CD, a song that is not even listed on the liner notes, was written by Charles Manson. Despite protests, both Rose and his record company, Gavin Records, refused to change future pressings of the CD. One of those killed 24 years ago by Charles Manson and his followers was actress Sharon Tate. Her sister Patty Tate is calling for a boycott of all Geffen CDs and films and for the Guns N' Roses CD itself. What effect do you think this song could have on young people? Well, it's very frightening because, um, you know, I, from what I've heard some young people speak about, you know, they think that Charles Manson is this really cool, weird guy. And, uh, it, and this is what what Axl Rose has uh, allowed to happen. But they have to remember what Charles Manson was about, and that was leading the, at the, back in 1969, these young followers of his to their own demise um, by doing his dirty deeds. Charles Manson receives no money from the Guns N' Roses recording of his song. All profits go to the son of a victim of the 1969 slayings. 